The apparel production lab houses four Juki industrial overlock machines known as sergers in the home sewing market. An overlock stitch binds the threads over the edge of single or multiple layers of fabric and can be used for edging, hemming, or seaming. These overlock machines are set up for a four thread stitch with two straight stitches coming from the upper needles and two binding threads coming from the lower loopers. The overlock machine has a blade which trims away fabric beyond the quarter inch stitch width as the fabric is fed through the machine. Unless otherwise noted, the standard procedure for threading all overlock machines is to thread from right to left, starting with the lower looper, the upper looper, and then the two straight stitch needles. If you ever experience an issue with the stitches not forming or breaking after just a few inches, try re-threading in the proper order. You do not need to re-thread the entire machine, just the four needles. To thread the lower loopers, first raise up the hinge portion of the table to access the lower half of the machine. Slide open the front plate to reveal the interior threading for the lower loopers. You may also wish to swing open the presser foot by raising the lever on the back of the machine to release the foot. This will make threading the top needles easier. On the inside of the front plate is a diagram to help remind students of the threading procedure. And because these machines have an active blade, always thread the machine with the power turned off. Starting with the lower looper, bring the thread up through the thread guide in the cone stand, then down through the two thread guides in the metal arm coming out of the cone stand and down towards the machine. On top of the machine is a crossbar with four pairs of thread guides. Run the thread from back to front through both eyelets, wrapping around the front of the crossbar. Come through the thread guide above the tension dial, then go clockwise around and through the tension plates, making sure to floss the thread in between the discs to ensure proper tension. After feeding through another thread guide just below the tension dial, now the thread channels through a narrow tube and down into the interior of the machine. If you're ever threading from scratch, use a threading tool or tweezers to help feed the thread through this tube. Once your thread comes out of the tube, there are four more thread guides which are color-coded to correspond with the diagram on the inside of the front plate. The most difficult step is the final threading of the lower looper. First, manually spin the flywheel until the lower looper comes completely into view. Feed the thread through the eyelet at the base of the looper and then bring the thread under and over the horizontal looper from behind, sliding it to the left until it catches on the far left side of the looper. There is a small hook at this point which is difficult to see. But once the thread is caught on the looper hook, you can then thread the eye of the looper from front to back. With the lower looper now threaded, bring your thread tail out through the back of the machine bed and we can move on to the upper looper. Follow the first few steps as the lower looper, feeding the thread through the stationary guides on the cone stand and around the tension plates, then down into its own narrow tube into the lower mechanism of the machine. The upper looper has four stationary thread guides which are color coded as well. With the upper looper in view, feed the thread through the hole at the base of the looper, which will carry the thread up the front of the looper and inside the small groove, and then thread the eye of the looper from front to back. As with the lower looper, manually spin the flywheel to access the eye of the upper looper, which is more easily reached above the bed of the machine. Pull the thread tail for the upper looper out towards the back along with the lower looper thread. We can now move on to the upper needles, which are much simpler and more like threading a straight stitch machine. If you haven't done so, raise the clear plastic shield in front of the top stitch needles to access the thread guides. The two top stitch needles follow the same course through their own sets of stationary thread guides and tension plates, just like the lower loopers. They also have their own color-coded system outlined in the diagram inside the machine. The final step is to feed the thread through the right needle from front to back. Again, it may be helpful to use tweezers or a threading tool for these steps. Repeat these steps for the left needle until you have all four thread tails running out the back of the machine. Lower the plastic shield and return the presser foot to its locked position. Close up the front plate of the machine and lower the table back down. The machine is now threaded and we're ready to sew. 
The overlock machine is used most often to finish raw edges. It creates a quarter inch wide stitch with two straight stitches while the two loopers bind the edge to prevent fraying. The blade will trim away all excess fabric beyond the stitch width, so be mindful of the blade as you sew as to avoid cutting into your garment. Unless your pattern is drafted with the intention of cutting away excess fabric, simply aim to have the raw edges of your fabric graze the blade, trimming away any loose fibers or threads. Occasionally you may use an overlock to sew seams for knit garments. To sew an overlocked seam, simply align your two or more layers of fabric along the edge to be sewn and feed through as you would a sewing machine. Be sure to remove all pins before the fabric reaches the blade as this can severely damage the machine. When you've finished your seam, chain off a long tail before clipping your threads. To overlock a curved edge, simply sew like you would with a straight stitch machine by watching your pace and pivoting when necessary. To pivot, simply lower the needles into your work so you can raise the presser foot with the right pedal, pivot, and then continue on. Remember, the blade will trim away any fabric that extends beyond the stitch width, so take your time with curves and more complex seams. With a little practice, you can easily pivot around even the strongest of curves. If your fabric is warping slightly after overlock sewing, simply steam iron the fabric to relax the tension and smooth out any bumps. When you're finished sewing at the overlock machine, always clear away any scraps or debris from the table or floor, and remember to leave a long tail for the next student.